Thanks for inviting us in tonight. You know, if you're a parent, you may be a little anxious right now because we're just weeks away from the start of school. In fact, you may be wondering, what on earth is school going to look like for your kid? And most importantly, will they be safe? You know, that topic has become a political debate in Washington with the president and the CDC. Parents, teachers, and students all caught in the middle. That's our big story tonight at 11 because this impacts so many of us. This is something school districts all across central Indiana are scrambling to figure out tonight. In fact, at Mount Vernon schools, one in 10 parents have now picked e-learning instead of in-person instruction. The superintendent there says that'll be a difference I haven't experienced in my 31 years as a teacher. The city's largest school district, IPS, will unveil its plan to parents and teachers tomorrow. Tonight it was Perry Township. Here's our Emily Longnecker. The board approves the reopening health and safety plan known as the plan. A sign of the times, a Perry Township Schools school board meeting where the public could watch remotely Thursday. School officials gathered to announce what it will look like for students to return to school in the age of COVID-19. We are not anxious at all. It was There was no doubt in our mind that we were going to send them back. Mom Erin Sinders says her sons, Noah age six and Isaiah age seven, are ready. E-learning did not work very well for us. E-learning will still be an option for students when the new school year kicks off July 29th. But for students who do go back to school, the district has a plan in place. We've taken all the same steps that every other school corporation across the state is taking right now. Masks will be required for students in grades 6 through 12. Students in K through 5 are being asked to wear one, but it's not mandatory. It's going to be awful hard to think a preschooler, kindergartner, first grader is, is going to be able to manage a mask themselves in a classroom setting. Cinders agrees with Superintendent Patrick Mapes. Her boys have worn masks when they go out. They do okay. I don't know how they will do all day with them. There will be increased cleaning in buildings and buses, more hand sanitizer and disinfectant in classrooms, and lots of social distancing. The district is asking parents, if possible, to drop their kids off at school rather than using buses. But if they do ride a bus, drivers and students will have to wear a mask and be assigned a seat. So I think it's going to be a mess in terms of transportation. Cinders already drops her kids off at school and understands the district asking others to as well but isn't looking forward to it. The lines for pick up and drop off are gonna be ridiculous and it's gonna cause traffic issues. And when it comes to not feeling well, the message is pretty clear. Stay home if you have a fever of 100 degrees or higher or symptoms of COVID-19. District officials know even as this plan is released, it could change at any time, depending on what happens with the virus. Erin Cinder says she and her husband can handle it and so can the kids. Kids are resilient and, and they can adapt so we mentioned that political infighting over schools. The president has threatened to cut funding to schools that don't reopen this fall. And the president has said he wants the CDC to change its guidelines for reopening. One of the president's complaints, it's too expensive. So we wanted to know how expensive is it? The School Superintendents Association believes the average district is going to spend $1.8 million in COVID costs alone to reopen. Think about that, just the extra cleaning could really add up. Then you've got the social distancing initiatives and support for at-home learning for some students. Now at the end of the day, of course, safety is key and just one case can have a snowball effect. Football practice here at Fishers High School is canceled the rest of the week after a student tested positive for COVID-19. Now the school district is asking other student athletes to watch out for signs and symptoms. The school had been taking a number of precautions to keep student athletes safe. You can see here with social distancing markings, they've got hand sanitizer here. Uh, they've also been splitting the student athletes into smaller groups when they're on the field. We saw that with soccer practice today. Some of those players who were near that player who tested positive will be under quarantine for the next 14 days. The rest of the football players are expected to hit the field again on Monday. It's official. As of this afternoon, the governors of all of Indiana's border states now have mandated masks in some form or another. The governor of Kentucky announced a statewide order that begins tomorrow. The governor of Ohio started ordering masks in certain counties earlier this week. Michigan and Illinois already have statewide rules in place. So why not Indiana? Yesterday, Governor Eric Holcomb said he supports local governments that choose to enact one. He noted those requirements are constitutional and proven to reduce the spread of COVID-19. But the governor stopped short of saying whether he would make any mask rules 
in his capacity as governor. So we reached out to the governor's office a few hours ago to see if that had changed given Kentucky's decision. The governor's office pointed us to his remarks that he made on July 1st. That's where Governor Holcomb was asked directly, why not mandate masks? He gave two reasons that day. Number one, he believes Hoosiers will do the right thing. And number two, the office has a long history of working with local governments and supporting their needs. Now, one of those local governments is Marion County, whose mandate went into effect today. So how'd it go? Wearing a mask while out in public is now mandatory in Marion County. That's when inside stores, entering a bar or restaurant, and outside when social distancing isn't possible, even for kids at summer camp. A spot check of businesses found some making it clear no one gets in without a mask. Others like Target were still strongly recommending but not requiring masks. In this hardware store, we were told they have no plans to make anyone mask up. The county health director says businesses who don't comply could be cited and fined. But Dr. Kane says before that happens, they'll work to educate those business owners that wearing a mask is one of the best ways to stop the spread of COVID-19. 